So today we're gonna to be learning how to do a grid drawing. It just says here in the directions that we're gonna redraw the first image from the grid on the left exactly in proportion to get the grid on the right. So this one I'm going to help you guys with uh, just to teach you a little bit how you can do the grid method. Again, it's just a, a tool that we use in drawing to help us draw more accurately. Some of you have already done this before. Um, some of you are very familiar with it and some of you this is completely new. So class, the idea is, uh, I'm gonna start with this circle here. Um, you want to be using where your object is hitting the grid. And I like to use kind of a tick mark method to do that. So what that means, class, is if I want to just look at this top box up here, it's basically looking one box at a time. So I'm gonna just zoom in just a tiny bit so you guys can kind of match up with me. I realize this seems like a super e easy process, but I see students kind of goof it up all the time. So when I look at this, that circle is pretty much halfway. So I'm gonna put a tick mark about halfway on the bottom. And then on the side of the box, it's about halfway up at the top. So now that I've ticked marked that off, I can start drawing the curve okay, of what I see. So it is kind of a combination of using your mathematical brain okay, to create those tick marks and to find those proportions where those dots go. But you also uh, should have your creative side to be able to actually draw what you see. Okay. So now I'm gonna keep going around my circle. If I go to the second box, right over here, it's a little bit farther than halfway. So I'm gonna scooch over, draw my little tick mark a little farther than halfway. And now here's the part where I think students kind of goof up. It's a circle, so I should start back here in this original box and continue to curve and round out my circle so that it actually looks circular and not like I have a squished puncture in my circle. Okay. So there we go. Then I'm gonna keep going around. Hey, when I look at these boxes from top to bottom, hey, top to bottom, it's about mm, a little bit farther down than halfway. So I'm gonna put a little tick mark there and then I'm gonna draw what I see. So I'm kind of rounding it out, hey, checking, going through my uh, little tick mark there so that I actually create a rounded circle and same process with just finishing up the circle, okay? So oftentimes what I see class is I see students do something like this and they just try and like connect the dots. Okay? That's not a circle, right? Okay? So you have to also draw what you see, okay? So let's move on to the little arch here really quick. We'll do one more together and then we'll talk about the remainder of the assignment. So I'm just erasing out those lines. Okay, so let's talk about the little rainbow arch here, right? I think the best strategy is to start with something that you know. Okay, something that I know and that I can see is that, boom, it's hitting this intersection right here. Okay, so that's two boxes over okay, and right down in the bottom corner for me. Okay, so there it is. There's the tick mark. And when I go across, okay, it's hitting the other intersection. Now, class, in order to keep track of like where this is, okay, sometimes it helps students to actually draw a line across. Okay, to be able to see the height of how far up they need to go. So if I kind of map that out, like boom, that's how high I need to go. Okay, now that can help me accurately draw that arch in correct proportion. Okay. Then I'm gonna keep going around my image here, okay, but I don't really know where this point is because it's out in my square. So I'm gonna kind of go over here and okay, I know where that is, it's hitting the grid. So I'm gonna scoot down, that's almost to my next intersection. I'm making a little tick mark. Okay, and then I know that this is a straight line across, so now I just have to figure out how far out am I going, which if I draw my line there, that's almost to halfway. So class, it's literally constantly doing, like in math class when you're plotting out uh, on a graph, like where dots your dots go or where your, um, combination of numbers go, that's what you're creating. Okay? If you're really good in social studies, figuring out longitude and latitude, like you can think about it that way. Okay? If you're just really good at figuring out where a dot goes, okay, then you can use that process. But I'm going to scooch over here now all the way across the box. I know that it should be at the same height. So if I just draw my line over, create a little tick mark there, okay, that's where it needs to go. If I keep going into my next square, Hey, I know that it should be right about out here. Hey, I can connect and draw my line. So you'll see that like 
I like to bounce around. It's not always just drawing the hard part first. It's finding what's the easiest thing to figure out or what's touching the grid. And then now this one's kind of complex. Okay? So sometimes another trick is to look at the negative space, okay? which would be that gap. How big is the negative space? And if I were to look at that, I'd say, ooh, I probably need to go up about that high. And when I do that, now I can create my arch that should be very similar to the outer arch. So they should match to create my arch. Okay. So again, a grid is literally just a tool to help us mathematically uh, figure out our drawing a little bit more accurately, okay? So let's just talk about uh, the expectation for this, right? This one, if you want a little bit more practice, this is one that I'm, I've done with you, okay? So this is kind of uh, like a C level, okay? Because you use teacher help, you've had teacher support in order to do this one. So you're welcome if you would like to continue it to practice, you certainly can. Okay, this one down here, this one is actually a sixth grade level, okay? So if you do this one well, okay, the highest grade that you're probably gonna get is like a B, okay? Um, mainly because it's very simple shapes. Um, it's uh, pretty simply put on the grid. So the, the complex thinking there isn't quite a seventh grade level just yet. On the back side though, okay, this is a seventh grade level grid process. Okay, what's happening here is it's no longer a one-to-one -one grid. It is a uh, one-to-two size proportion grid. So the, the drawing is just getting twice the size. So with this, okay, my last suggestion that I would give you, many of you in your brain have seen Winnie the Pooh many, many, many times. Okay, so I would recommend uh, the easiest way that I actually learned how to draw too was to flip it upside down. And the reason why you want to draw it upside down is because when you do that, your brain no longer sees this as Winnie the Pooh, it sees it as lines and shapes. And going one box at a time, and then you can start breaking it down a little bit easier in your brain. Like I'm just looking for a dot and I'm just looking for a line, which everyone is capable of doing. So if I start just down here, I'll get you started with this one on this ear. Okay. Another thing I'll mention that helps students sometimes is if you flip it upside down, you can do a process of like a, B, C, D, and then you can do like one, two, three, four, five. You just then need to uh, map out this grid with the same letters and numbers. It doesn't matter what order as long as they're the same. Okay, and then this would be square one, this would be two, three, four, five. That way you can kind of keep track of which box you should be looking at. Okay, all too often some students start going too fast and then they end up with like a teeny tiny poo foot, right? Okay, so if I look at this ear, just to help get you started, for some students it helps them if you add an extra cut in half four quadrant in the box. Okay, so all I did was I cut it into fours. I'm gonna do the same thing here, cut it into fours. Okay, and then when I'm looking at this, okay, I know that the ear is hitting somewhere right about there on the top. On the side, it's somewhere right about in here that it's hitting my grid line. And then I can just kind of see that that arch kind of comes out somewhere about there. And now I'm going to draw what I see. Okay. Again, the next trick would be like something super small like this that goes up and out. I can just easily draw that back in. Okay, the head, I can see that it's kind of skinnying up right next along this line. Okay, it cuts all the way over to right about here on my next grid line so that's you know a little bit lower somewhere in there so now i can try and draw that headline okay so class if you do the winnie the pooh hey that'll give you an opportunity to reach for that a it needs to be done at a proficient level to get the a uh, but i'm just sharing that with you so that you understand um, the levels of complexity here so if you want to practice first you're welcome to practice first on those other ones um, but ultimately, the goal is to get to uh, this final Winnie the Pooh grid. And then every now and again, it's good to actually flip it right side up and double check. Yeah, that looks pretty accurate to what's, what's there. Okay, you can kind of tidy it up if you need to. But that's how you use 
the grid method. Okay?